The following is a video tutorial on how to achieve highly explorable panoramas of museum insect collection drawers using GigaPan technology. We will guide you through the steps necessary to capture, process, and upload these panoramas. But first, what is GigaPan? GigaPan is an imaging system designed to take multiple, overlapping, high-resolution photos of an area of interest and stitch them into one large panorama made up of millions to billions of pixels. The system was developed through a collaboration between Carnegie Mellon University and NASA's Ames Research Center for use on the Mars rovers, but is now available to the public. The hardware, shown here, is a robot that can accommodate various digital cameras and attaches to standard threads used on tripods and other photography accessories. The unit swivels and rotates around a central point, taking pictures at specific intervals using a robotic finger that presses the shutter button on the camera. Digital wire signaling is also available for certain cameras. Once complete, the individual images are stitched using GigaPan software to form one large panorama that is zoomable to the resolution of each photo. GigaPans are usually taken of large landscapes or events where you can see the entire area in all its vastness or zoom into individual elements in the panorama, like people or notable objects. However, many people are using the technology for other applications. To achieve the results presented here, you first need to assemble the right equipment. We employ a GigaPan Epic 100 series silver model robot paired with a Canon PowerShot G11 camera. We used an AC adapter with the robot and the camera for continuous power, which is advisable if undertaking a large scale project without having to replace batteries often. If you purchase the GigaPan Epic Pro model, an AC adapter is provided. However, all other models are only equipped to use batteries from the factory. We retrofitted an adapter into the Epic 100, and there is a link in the video description for how to incorporate one. The adapter for the camera was purchased from Canon. The Robot Plus camera are then attached horizontally to a copy stand that is fitted with a custom jig to accommodate insect drawers. Lastly, lighting is provided by two continuous compact fluorescent lamps each with nine bulbs producing daylight spectrum light. Before you start shooting, you'll need to set up the camera. This involves using the dials and menus to save certain settings necessary to get optimal shots for the panorama. If the camera, like our G11, has custom program slots, it will be good to save all settings in one of these for recalling later. First, you want to turn off all power saving settings. Set auto shutdown to off, and screen shut down to the longest interval, for example, three minutes. Next, the optical zoom should be set to a maximum without going into digital zoom. This will ensure that all photos are at the highest magnification. After that, set the white balance to the type best suited for your lighting, in our case, daylight fluorescent. The aperture on our G11 was set to maximum, or f8, for increased depth of field but this may be adjusted according to the exposure and depth of field that works best for you. The flash should also be turned off and the focus should be locked at the sharpness desired from the height when attached. Lastly, the images should be captured as the largest size and best resolution. For other settings and information on how to attach the camera to the GigaPan unit, please follow the link to the Epic 100 manual provided in the video description. Once the settings are selected and the camera is attached to the GigaPan robot, the entire unit can then be attached to the threads on the copy stand. The camera lens should be facing the table with the robot's controls facing up and accessible to the user. For shooting most insect drawers, including California Academy, Cornell, and USNM styles, the entire unit should be positioned about 18 and a quarter inches, or 46.4 centimeters, from the baseboard of the copy stand, measured from the robot's attachment threads. This allows for good resolution of different sized insects while reducing distortion and curvature due to the pivoting action of the unit. At this point, you must also depress the robotic finger on the camera's shutter button and lock it down with the nut. This will ensure that the finger applies enough pressure to capture the images. After attaching the unit at the correct height and turning on the lights, it is time to set up the GigaPan robot. 
On initial startup, the robot should prompt a series of settings. One of the first is to set the field of view for your particular camera. Instructions for this can be found in the Epic 100 manual linked in the description below. As an optional way to reduce vibration during image capture, we also set a 2 second delay on the camera and a 4.5 second delay on the Gigapan robot, found under the time per pick option. These allow the camera to be still while capturing each image. After selecting the drawer to shoot, it is highly advisable to fill any empty unit trays with filler materials. We use small papers printed with texts and drawings. The reason for this is that the camera sometimes has trouble focusing on large white spaces, even when the focus is locked. Large white spaces can also affect the stitching. So, with the lights, camera, and Gigapan robot powered on, place the first drawer on the copy stand without a lid, centered, and with the top of the drawer facing away from the vertical arm of the copy stand. You can now begin to frame the panorama. This is done initially using the new panorama function on the robot. After making this selection, the robot will ask several questions on its display, including asking to set the upper right and lower left corners of the area of interest, in this case the entire drawer. The robot will then have the area set up for each subsequent drawer, and it will also calculate the number of images being captured. For our purposes, we capture 35 images five columns, each with seven images. Once all settings are input, the robot asks the user whether to start. Once initiated, the robot begins shooting and finishes by itself. One key thing to remember is that if multiple drawers are going to be shot, it is necessary not to move the unit after it is done. This is because the robot uses the final position to calculate the start position, and deviations lead to incorrect panoramas. After setup, if the final position remains, all that is needed is the last panorama function on the robot to shoot every new drawer with the same dimensions. After shooting a series of drawers, it is good to transfer the images to a computer. We do this by accessing the USB port on the camera while it is still attached to the robot by connecting a wire from it to the computer. Once the images are transferred into folders for each drawer, they can be stitched and, if desired and a user account is available, uploaded using software provided by Gigapan. Each program is simple and user friendly, so we will not go into them here. After being processed, panoramas can be exported as large images viewed using the software, or, if uploaded, accessed online at gigapan.com. And that's it. You now have panoramas of insect drawers. Finally, some additional notes. For our project's research purposes, we include a few additional steps. First, while placing the filler material in the white space of the drawers, as discussed earlier, we also add color standards to the bottom right corner. This allows for future color and exposure correction. Second, we put a label on each drawer with the date that the last panorama was taken. This tells us when the drawer was imaged so that we can monitor how much change has occurred and update the panoramas in the future. Lastly, when not in use, we put a cover over the entire unit to keep it dust free. So there you have it. With these basic instructions, you should be able to capture multi-megapixel panoramas of most insect museum drawers. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to post them here or find us at insectmuseum.org. We have also provided useful links to information about the project in Gigapan. Good luck!